In May, I tried to release a video I'd made. It was called To Vax or Not To Vax. We get demonetized a lot, but that video was not simply demonetized. It was killed outright. YouTube deleted it from their server and notified me that it violated their mysterious community standards. No appeal was possible. Why? I can only speculate. I suspect that, as conservative opinion against vaccinations was rising, YouTube wrote an algorithm to block vaccination videos if they were being released by conservative channels. I read thousands of YouTube comments on this channel during the months leading up to the election in November. The vaccines were just about to come out as well. I don't recall seeing any anti-vaccination sentiment building among our viewers. What I saw instead was a cocky certainty that Donald Trump would win, likely by a landslide. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. But after the election was certified in January, I noticed something new in our BCL comment threads, a negativity toward COVID vaccinations. This was beginning to spread like, well, like a virus. I sure saw it on my Facebook feed. It seemed that every liberal I knew had gotten the shots as fast as they could. Moderate conservatives were a bit more reluctant, but by spring, they too were mostly inoculated. But those on my friend list who are still talking about Dominion voting machines, they were now lined up solidly against vaccinations. At that point, April and May of 2021, there were several vaccine holdouts among Republican senators, and nearly half of Republicans in the House of Representatives were either skeptical about vaccinations or unwilling to say one way or the other. I guess they're waiting to see what their constituents decided. COVID is on the rise again, particularly in red states. I'd hate to see the rest of the country facing shutdowns like we've endured in California. Obviously, all American adults have to make this decision for themselves. So I figure that I'll tell you what I myself decided to do and how I came to that decision. So let's fire up the truck and get into it. There is no one single reason why people resist the COVID-19 vaccinations. As is true with every issue in our polarized society, opinions range from quite reasonable to full-on conspiracy theories. I added up the ones I was hearing most often and boiled the list down to 10. Then I did the research. I don't mean that I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I mean that I read articles published by such reliable sources as Johns Hopkins, the Mayo Clinic, the Cleveland Clinic, Walter Reed Medical Center, and major medical journals. For this video, let's just look at the reasons given not to vax and the answers I found when I went looking. I'm just gonna sum them up in simple language. I'll leave some links below if you wanna dig deeper. Claim number one, the vaccines are not safe because they are not fully approved by the FDA. Answer number one, the vaccines have an emergency use authorization. The FDA doesn't give an EUA to a drug unless it has been fully tested and shown to be safe. Final approval is a slow bureaucratic process and is expected to happen shortly. Claim number two, the testing happened too fast to be trustworthy. Answer number two, tests went so fast because multiple processes overlapped each other, being done concurrently rather than consecutively and the drug companies shared data freely with one another rather than being secretive like they would normally be. Trump's Operation Warp Speed was designed to supercharge every process. Everybody was working overtime, but safety was still the standard. Claim number three, the government has protected vaccine manufacturers from liability, and that makes the risk of side effects too high. Answer number three, Yes, our government has assumed liability for vaccines during a health emergency. That happened in 1988. This was done to incentivize drug companies to get involved if we got hit with a pandemic. But if a vaccine harms you, there is an established way to receive a settlement. Since the US government took over vaccine liability 33 years ago, they have paid out over $4 billion to claimants. When I asked myself if I thought immunity from liability would make drug companies careless, the answer was no. A well-established company like Pfizer or J&J &J lives and dies by its reputation. Do they want to hurt millions of people and crater their stock to boot? I don't think so. Claim number four, the vaccines were manufactured before they were deemed safe. Answer number four, once the drug companies were sure that vaccines were safe and effective, they did begin to manufacture before receiving emergency approval. 
Again, outside-the-box thinking by Operation Warp Speed. If the FDA had not been satisfied by the testing data, these pre-manufactured vaccines would have been destroyed. Claim number five, the spike proteins that these vaccines contain will thereafter float around in the body causing all kinds of health issues. Answer number five, the spike proteins impersonate the little structures we see in all the drawings of coronavirus. This is how the vaccine trains our cells to watch out for the real ones and get right to work when we're exposed to the virus. Once they've taught our immune systems what to look out for, they detach and dissolve. If they didn't and ended up in the bloodstream, they'd be destroyed by the liver. Claim number six, some people have caught COVID from the vaccines. Answer number six, you cannot catch COVID-19 from the vaccines because there is no coronavirus in the vaccines. Many vaccines do contain dead virus, which also trains our immune systems. In the past, in rare cases, people did occasionally catch an illness from an inoculation because some bit of virus wasn't as dead as they thought it was. Neither the Moderna or Pfizer vaccines is what they call a deactivated virus vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson one is, but it uses a disabled adenovirus to train the immune system, not coronavirus. So nobody is catching COVID from the shots, not in this country anyway. Claim number seven, mRNA vaccines alter human DNA. Answer number seven, messenger RNA has been studied for two decades for use in vaccinations. It's far from an unknown technology. The vaccines do not penetrate the nucleus of the cell, which is where the strands of DNA reside. So no alteration to our genetic code is possible. Claim number eight, vaccines are made from human embryos. Answer number eight, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines did use a laboratory propagated fetal cell line in final safety confirmation. That cell line dates back to Holland in 1973. It's called HEK293. It's not clear whether the fetus used was from a miscarriage or an abortion, but nothing from that cell line is in the actual vaccines and no fetal tissue was used in making these vaccines. Claim number nine, getting the shots will render women infertile. Answer number nine, this notion apparently grew out of an online post claiming that the spike protein in coronavirus was the same as a spike protein called Sincitin-1 that helps the placenta to attach in the womb. The idea is that the immune system, having learned to attack the spike protein in coronavirus, would do the same to Sincitin and prevent pregnancy. Completely different proteins, completely false claim. There were 23 pregnant women in the Pfizer study and one miscarried, but she had only received a placebo. 35,000 pregnant women have been immunized with no major problems. So on that front as well, pregnancy isn't threatened. But of course, there's been no long-term studies of the children born to these women. So I can understand the reluctance. However, there is some indication that pregnant women can have a tough time with COVID-19. Claim number 10, various theories about Bill Gates, including the fantastical claims that he's trying to depopulate the world and that he's trying to inject microchips into every one of us. Answer number 10, I'm not sure how Bill Gates turned into Dr. Evil in the minds of so many. He's probably done more to improve the health of people across the globe than any other single human being in history, not to mention making our lives easier. I typed this on a PC running Windows. In recent years, Gates organized an agreement with other billionaires who pledged to give half of their fortunes to philanthropic causes. Over 200 pledges, $600 billion pledged so far. He himself has given 50 billion to help the less fortunate. He might not be a saint, but I'd say that Bill Gates is probably not a James Bond supervillain either, even if he is a Democrat. Look, I had my own reservations, particularly given the highly politicized nature of everything in the US these days. COVID has been a political football, no doubt. I'm skeptical of everything that impacted us in 2020, but that skepticism led me to the following line of questioning. Is it fair to say that a lot of Democrats wanted Operation Warp Speed to fail? Because that would be a failure for Donald Trump, right? But across the board, Democrats are the group most likely to get vaccinated. Why would they do this if they were not convinced of the shot's safety and effectiveness? Why? Don't you think that if they had any plausible reason to call Operation Warp Speed a failure, they would have jumped at the chance? 
Don't you think that if the vaccinations were not safe, they would be the ones shouting it from the rooftops? I looked at this from every angle I could think of using blue collar logic and common sense as my guide. After looking into all of the concerns that I had about vaccines, I weighed my options and my civic responsibilities. And then I made an appointment and went on down to the vaccination clinic. I was offered a choice between Pfizer and Moderna. I went with Pfizer because they are the more established pharmaceutical house. Common sense told me that they had less to gain and more to lose by being reckless. Here's my card. I'd have showed it to you two months ago if YouTube had not killed that video. I only hope that this one survives the algorithms. These vaccines came to us through the efforts of President Trump. He got vaccinated before he left the White House. So did Melania. In the last week, Steve Scalise, who had been a holdout, has taken the shot and asked his people to do the same. Why well, had antibodies back uh, months ago? I had taken that test and had antibodies for COVID. Uh, but ultimately, with the Delta variant, I saw the spike in hospitals, and, and primarily it was over 98% of people in the hospitals with COVID were unvaccinated. Uh, and that's when I decided to get uh, the full vaccination. So I got the Pfizer vaccine. I'm glad I did it. Uh, it's very safe and effective. Well, and now 37%, only 37% of your state is fully vaccinated. And we're seeing people getting vaccinated now and knowing that it saves lives. So what's your messages to constituents, to your constituents now? I would strongly encourage people to get the vaccine. Uh, it's safe, it's effective, uh, it's available for anybody who wants it. But look, this is a medical decision. And, and I do think if there are people that have hesitation, which clearly there are, uh, they should be talking to their doctor about it. Governor Ron DeSantis is now advocating for vaccinations. Greg Abbott was vaccinated in January and Christy Nome in early April. Even such people as Sean Hannity are now urging us all to take the shot. I will say that coercion is starting to appear, and that makes me uncomfortable. Federal government employees are being required to vaccinate. The town next door to me, Pasadena, California, is requiring city workers to get the shots. And just a couple of days ago, the Pentagon announced that military personnel will all be vaccinated by mid-September. But haven't soldiers always had to get shots? I'm sure they have. I know that as school kids, we were all lined up and given vaccines and nobody thought it was the end of the world. As for vaccine passports, well, you've always had to get shots if you were traveling to certain other countries. Wasn't that a vaccine passport? Trump was the first to impose COVID-19 travel bans, and we thanked him for that. It seems to me that in this case, a vaccine passport might be a form of insurance against future travel bans. But hey, I got vaccinated because I chose to do so. I think that about covers my thoughts about the shots. If you are 20 years old and in great shape, you have little risk of dying from COVID-19. But if you're my age and you're carrying an extra 50 pounds around your middle, the coronavirus has you in its crosshairs. If you've come this far without getting sick, you might keep dodging the bullet. But since President Trump succeeded in bringing us vaccines that virtually every country on earth has approved, why not play it safe and roll up a sleeve? I'm guessing that you don't want your kids and grandkids to watch you struggling for breath in an ICU somewhere. Think it through, weigh the risks, and make your own decision. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and then click the little bell to get notifications.